Hello. Today we'll talk about running records. They are so important because they help a teacher see what a child is able to do with their reading process. Because when you think about it, reading really happens in the head. Um, you can't see what a child is thinking as they're reading. So when you try to make a visual image of what they're reading, it helps you to see what they're actually doing, maybe what they're attending to with the print in their head. And so uh, I've always been taught that a running record is really like a window into a child's reading process, how their brain is processing text. Um, it's so important that our running records are accurate and that we all share a similar coding system so that we can um, when we analyze each other's records or when we look at someone else's records, they'll mean the same thing. It's kind of like shorthand. When a person learns shorthand, everyone who knows shorthand can read and understand it. And so that's what we want our running records to be like. So we want people to code them the same way for accuracy's sake. It's also important that we have a very standard um, way to collect them, meaning that if a child read something for me, I would score it in a very similar way as you. And so um, having those standards in place will help us not to have overinflated scores or percentages so that we have children placed in appropriate text levels. And if we're trying to group children for homogeneous settings or heterogeneous group settings, then we won't be skewed in our results. So just to recap um, a little bit about running records and the coding system, we won't spend much time on it. The training, if you were to really have the intense training, it would take several hours and something that you would revisit quite frequently. But this is just a little review and I'm going to highlight just the primary or the main types of errors that you may encounter in a running record. So the first one on the chart, if you'll look, is accurate reading. Accurate reading is coded with a check mark. Sometimes it's referred to as a tick. Every time a child reads a word, the teacher should put a check mark. If you are doing this on a blank sheet of paper where the child is reading a book and you don't have the words typed on another piece of paper, which is the way that you would typically do it um, if it was a very informal setting, then if there are five words on the page, you would expect, or, uh, not the page, I'm sorry, well, it could be on the page. If there are five words on the page, then if the child read all five words accurately, then you would see five check marks. If there are two lines of text on the page, then for that page, the, there would be um, evidence that there were two lines and you would try to delineate that by drawing a line on your paper. I'm having a major thunderstorm at my house right now, so you probably heard the thunder um, roll, roaring. So um, I hope what I was just saying makes sense. And I'll show you that in just a few minutes if it, if it was a little bit confusing. All right, the next type of error is a substitution. And it's, it's exactly what it sounds like it means. The child substitutes a word. And when you record on a running record, you create something that looks like a fraction. What the child says is always written on the top and what the text actually says is on the bottom. So when you record a substitution, it would look like this, what the child says and then what the text actually is. The next type of error is an omission, and that means that a word was simply omitted and the child um, skipped over it for whatever reason and you would put a dash to indicate that that word was not said. Another type of error that's very, that's almost like the opposite of an omission is inserting a word that's called an insertion and it's indicated with a dash. You write the, the, um, the word that they insert in, you write what they said, and then to indicate that there was no word there, then you would put a dash. Another thing that it's important to do is to capture all the attempts the child makes. So if a child is saying a word slowly, making any sound, any part of the word, 
then you would capture all of those attempts. So instead of just giving the child a check mark because he eventually got the word packed, I, it's important for me to know that he didn't know it right away. He made three tries actually before he got it. So he said, pa, 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 packed. Okay, and that's important because you know the child is attending to the first sound. And, that's, and then they were able to go all, all the way through the word. The next type of error is a self-correction. That's where they make an error and they immediately self-correct it. And it's coded with an SC. And so you would write what the child says and then put the text underneath it, of course. And then when they make the self-correction, you put a straight line down indicating that there was another action taken. And then you put SC to show that it was immediately self-corrected. Now, there are very, um, very, varying um, other things that could happen. Sometimes children get all tangled up. But like I said, these are just some of the main errors that you would encounter. If you had more, uh, more time and, and we had hours and hours of video, then we would practice all kinds of types of errors. But this is just a quick, simple overview. So um, here are three others. A child might appeal for help. If they appeal to you, they might look at you with puppy dog eyes. They might not say a word. They just stop and they look at you and they're just like begging for help. Sometimes they, even, they might say, I don't know, will you help me? Anything like that, we would code it with an A for they appealed. If you tell them the word, then you, you score it with a T for told. Then um, another thing they do is repeat words. And when they repeat a word, you would put an R to indicate that the word was repeated. If they repeat the whole phrase, you put an R, but then you draw an arrow back to where they actually began repeating. Now, um, all of these are not coded as, an, are counted as an error. So, of course, accurate reading is not counted as an error. Uh, substitutions are errors, omissions are errors, insertions. This would not be an error because the child is, eventually gets it right. Um, if they appeal and you tell them that is an error, um, and the repeat is not counted as an error either because they're just repeating the phrase. On the appeal, one of the things that I would recommend is if a child pauses for more than three seconds, if they're stuck in a word, they're not sounding it out, they're not doing anything, go ahead and tell them what the word is. And in your head, you should count 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Pausing for about three seconds is way plenty of time for a child to know a word. If you wait much longer than that, you risk the chance of the child losing the comprehension of the story, and you risk that, um, that, that, that everything's going to break apart, and you will be inflating the score of, of the um, percentage of accuracy because the child either knows the word or they don't know the word. And you don't want to give them so much wait time that it's a distortion of the truth, okay? So three seconds, hold on to that because that's really important. All right, so we're gonna practice just a little bit. Those of you that are um, with me still, if you'll get out a piece of paper, just a blank piece of paper like I have right here, and we're gonna use the words here and we'll pretend that this is a book and it has these, it has um, one sentence on each page, okay? So we're gonna start off by um, this first row here. It's, it says, I'm packing my pajamas. Is everybody with me? Okay, and here's what the child says. The child says, I am packing my PJs. All right, so this is, if you're, if you're scoring it right now, taking the running record, I am packing my PJs. This is what you should have on your paper. I am packing my, and then you write PJs. If you don't have time to come back and write pajamas because the child turns the page, then don't worry about it. Write that later, okay? Then on the next row, the child says, I pack my brush. I pack my brush. So if you scored this row, this is what it should look like. I, they skipped the word am, okay? And then they said pack 
for packing. And then they have my, and then they said brush for hairbrush. Okay, hope I did that right. So on my running record sheet, if I had a blank sheet of paper, I would start drawing lines like this to indicate that this was a page and this is a page. And then I would number it like this, okay? So here we go, we're on the road with toothbrush. Here's what the child said. I am packing my blue toothbrush. I am packing my blue, they inserted this in, blue toothbrush, okay? Now we're moving down to line four, the one with pillow. Here's what the child said. Get ready and code or score. I am pa packing my pillow. So this is what you should have. I am pa packing my pillow. All right, row five, the one with books. This is what the child said. I am packing my bear books. I am packing my bear books. And the child inserted that. Okay, the next row is the one with Teddy. Here's what the child said. I am packing, packing my Teddy bear. I am packing, they repeated that, my Teddy, they said there, that was an insertion, okay? And the last row, here's what the child did. I am going, I am going to my friend's house. I am going, they repeated that whole phrase, I am going to my friend's house, okay? That's just a little review of running records. I hope that that was helpful to you. I'll pause the tape in just a few seconds, and then we're going to do a little review of how to score them. Hope you'll tune back in.